Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at Sobek. I've had more than a few of you asking about it since it has the parallel augments to the Jatkatag video I previously covered. Acid Shells, another percent HP scaling damage acquired from Rathum. The setups I'm going to show you have infinite scaling just like the Jadkatag because they operate on percent HP damage, meaning it is perfect for steel path and endless endurance. As the premise of the builds are roughly similar, I'm not going to go as in-depth on the frame builds today, especially because I'm going through 5 of them. That's right, 5 separate frames for Sobek. I'll be showcasing them in order of increasing effectiveness, so make sure you stick around. As you can probably imagine, these builds are reliant on armor strip, just like Jatkatag's Vulcan Blitz. The percent HP damage is also less, meaning we need a bit more damage support. However, Sobek is a gun, meaning it has many more ways to inflict damage. So let's take a look at how I built this thing. I have two builds today, but we'll only really be showcasing the Rivenless setup, as Rivens are only really needed to get the first kill off and start the chain reaction of arcane buffs in the run. I'm building this gun for pure damage and crits with Hunter Munitions to fuel the Slash DOTs. This is because we're using what I like to call a Reverse Condition Overload setup. Instead of priming with guns for melee, we're priming with melee for our guns. Therefore, I don't want to mod any elements on the weapon since they don't affect our Slash ticks. You also probably noticed the incredibly low crit chance on Sobek. That's okay because every frame I'm showcasing will be using that Combat Discipline Arcane Avenger gimmick. So just pretend the weapon has an extra 45% flat crit. We're starting off with our base damage and multi-shot mods Prime Point Blank and Hell's Chamber, then we got our staple Primed Cleanse Corrupted for double dipping slash DOTs and Shotgun Spaz to nearly double our fire rate. Prime Ravage is obviously present to fuel the slash ticks and Hunter Munitions to source them. Now comes the interesting mods. Laser Sight is needed to start the chain, or if your Arcane Avenger expires. Most of our damage comes from DOTs and Avenger won't proc until we kill enough things so we want some form of crit to start the chain. Laser Sight is the best critical chance mods for shotguns for this purpose. Finally, our showcase mod, Acid Shells. It does a bit of corrosive damage in AoE on kill, but it also only hits with a 45% HP AoE. This is resisted by armor, which is why we'll be looking for AoE strip today. Also, enemies killed by the explosion are considered Sobek kills, meaning they can chain their own explosions as well. This was not the case for Vulcan Blitz, meaning Sobek has significantly higher AoE clearing potential than Jack Katag. The Riven build I'm running is Minus Impact. This is the most important part because it allows your pure damage multi-shot and crit Sobek to be 50% slash. Now you are no longer reliant on Hunter Munitions to proc slash and can instead mod for status for much faster slash ticks. The only benefit having a Riven does for Sobek here is killing the first enemy faster to chain the reactions. It will not improve the chain detonation damage because that is only dependent on the enemy's total HP and acid shells. Now let's take a look at our reverse primer. I've chosen the Zorus because it has a 8 meter base radius on its explosion. This is leagues ahead of any other glaive available. It is the largest by a long shot and perfect for priming crowds. For this reason, I've stacked the build with 60-60 viral mods to increase its weight. I've also slotted both Killing Blow and Prime Fury to make the pre-throw and wind up faster. Then I slapped on melee prowess and weeping wounds to push status even further while maintaining only viral as the added element. As Zorus has infinite combo duration, this lets me save a slot and bring lasting sting instead, significantly lengthening the duration of viral procs. Our final mod is Volatile Rebound. This lets the glaive explode on every bounce, meaning it hits up to 4 enemies. As combo duration is infinite, you can easily keep the glaive at 12x combo which puts it at 170% status chance. 4 bounces at 170% status chance with 8 meters AoE and main weight viral means we will be priming our Sobek slash ticks extremely consistently. Now for our companion I've chosen to bring a sentinel. Why? Sobek is a primary weapon meaning it can benefit from the vigilante mod set. I brought a typical worm build with supportive negate, synth set, primed regen, vacuum and radar utility. This build should have assault mode but I'm not going to equip it because it makes it difficult to showcase the build. The sweeper I'm bringing is a pure stat stick featuring all three vigilante primary mods to boost our Sobek crits. Now let's take a look at our first frame, Garuda. Garuda seems to interact weirdly with acid shells with enemies dying in pulses rather than all at once, you'll see in a second. Her damage is slightly lacking so we will be using ensnare to make sure we get the most out of acid shells. We're focusing on range to get the largest crowds out of ensnare. Some duration is nice so that we don't have to cast her one as often for protection. Keeping her around half health with her 3 will help her DPS but don't go down to 2 HP as combat discipline will kill you. 
some strength is needed to reach 100% bleed, I would slot Umbral Intensify here instead of Transient Fortitude if I could fit it to save some duration. As the only frame with self-sustained energy on this list, we can actually run Arcane Rage instead of Energize. All the other frames will still be sharing the Combat Discipline and Arcane Avenger setup though. So let's go over the rotation now. Normally you'll want to keep your 1-up to stay safe, besides that you'll cast and snare on an enemy, cast Seeking Talons on the resulting crowd, charge throw your Zorus, don't ever detonate, Volatile Rebound does that for us without burning our combo, and then afterwards shoot the head with Laser Sight, then watch them cascade to their deaths. It's kinda slow, but entertaining, and they're guaranteed to die, you can move on to the next targets. This is what I mean by it interacting weirdly. Anyways, let's move on to the next frame. Number 2 on the list is Banshee. We want Prime Sure Footed in the X list slot here, I just can't fit it. The premise of the build, keep your silence up for some CC at all times. We don't want too much range because the stun of silence doesn't last that long. We need some strength to ensure Sonic Fracture is 100% strip. You can run Umbral Intensify instead of Transient Fortitude if you want some more duration so you don't have to recast Silence as often. Then balance it out for some efficiency and there we go. Flows the cherry on top, you really don't need the primed version. Once setting up, you want to ensnare the target first, then immediately Sonic Fracture them. You have enough range you don't need to worry for them to reel in, they will get ragdolled, but don't worry about that either. They come right back. It's a bit weird, but it works. You can even glaive them while they're reeling back in then immediately start shooting their heads with Sobek. Easy cleanup. You kinda make a mess with the room, but that's just the way it is with Banshee usually. Next frame. Surprise, Ember is back. This is a slight variation to the Jack Attack setup. As usual, we have swapped for Combat Discipline and Arcane Avenger instead of Growing Power. Energize to maintain our economy, and we want to build for decent range for our Fire Blast armor strip coverage as well as Ensnare. The cool thing about this build is you actually don't even have to run Ensnare unless the enemies are way too far apart as it doesn't have the massive ragdoll problem that Banshee's Sonic Fracture had. Neutral Strength is enough for 100% Strip, 175 efficiency lets you spam skills as needed. Duration isn't that important as they will die within seconds of getting hit by Ensnare anyways. Alternatively, you can also just alternate between her 4 and Fire Blast if you're looking for greater CC and don't need the clumping that Ensnare offers. Here's the first rotation after I set up her 2 and then her 4 to max out my bar. This one will be with Ensnare. Then we Fire Blast, throw the Glaive, and Sobex to the face. Pretty clean and easy, am I right? So now let's try that again with her 4 instead. It has a much wider range potential as you can see, and then we can just Fire Blast like before, then we glaive our targets, and so back again. The extra armor strip from her 4 for Ignite makes the setup kill a little bit faster for the chain reaction. And that's it for Ember. Our favorite Technomancer returns again in this video, and it's even easier than before. Vobin's armor strip is based around percent over time. This means there is no reasonable way to instantly strip all the armor. So I've actually opted for 335% strength, which means we can full strip at 3 seconds. To get the strength this high, I did have to sacrifice another stat, so I chose duration because we only need 3 seconds to strip regardless. 23% duration doesn't impact the build because it still makes the Vortex and Bastille last longer than 3 seconds. We want some range to have decent coverage on the armor strip and at least neutral efficiency so we don't break the bank. The empty slot should contain prime flow and can easily cover all our energy needs. So we can spawn our corrupted heavy gunners. I walk up to them and just chuck my 4. They all get CC'd. In this 3 second window I can shoot my glaive and proc laser sight. I can either end the pastille as soon as I see red health bars or just let it collapse naturally. Normally if I keep shooting after proccing laser sight, they will actually die like this before the bastille even collapses and it will instantly nuke everything. Otherwise I end up with a pile of enemies that I'm free to kill. I can always just chuck another bastille too if I want to keep them all cc'd in the middle. Now the final frame, Zaku. This is probably the easiest setup of them all, especially because you can reuse targets. Natural talent should go in the empty X list as Gaze takes quite a bit of time to cast. Once again, normal flow is probably enough for this build. We need to hit 200 strength for the full Gaze strip without relying on growing power. This way we can still slot on combat discipline. You do want to keep an eye out on your energy though, as it did cost an extra 25 efficiency to achieve this build with Blind Rage instead of 2 mod slots. More range is always better, because gay strip ores are persistent until they expire and you can even freeze it with your 4 vast on time. Finally, I went with a little bit of strength for better uptime on his 4 for freezing his 2 and 3. You can use lock if you want to, but honestly it's quite unnecessary in this setup. You can even reuse the same gaze target until it expires. This means you may be able to kill swathes of enemies just by sticking around to chuck your Zorus to proc viral and killing them again with Sobek. Make sure you always start the head to maintain laser sight. This is definitely the fastest of the 5 frames I've showcased. 
Additionally, you can set up two gaze auras on opposite ends of the room so you always have some stripped enemies to kill. There isn't really any steel path footage of these because the setup is super basic. Also, I don't want to fill this video with steel path of all 5 frames, so this is where we will end. Sobek is still strong as ever, and it is very comparable to the Katag setup, or maybe even better due to the massive AoE and the explosions being able to re-trigger acid shells, whereas Katag couldn't. Honestly, so long as you have a way to armor strip enemies, this setup will always work. And no Riven needed, as I showed. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed, I'm trying my best to get you new information out always as soon as possible like I've done with covering the Tempest story. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you the info first once the Sisters of Parvos mainline drops. Don't want to miss out on day one Ureli content, do you? That'll be it for this video, thank you all for watching and see you all next time.